Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right guys, cause you know what? Do you wanna know something? I know, I know you guys know this, I talk about it all the time, but pole position is, I think maybe my favorite game of all time. It might be number two, it might be number one, I don't know, it, it's a cross, it's a toss up between Donkey Kong and pole, and pole Position as far as my favorite games. I love this game so much because it is so playable today. It is still a great game and also it ends. I love that about it. it there's a finite ending to this game. The game, you basically wanna get your highest score you can before the time runs up. Anyway, I love, love, love Pole Position. But there is a problem with Pole Position, guys. And it's the hardware. And it sucks too, because it's such a great game. You know, the hardware is just a, a pain in the ass to keep working, and a lot of collectors give up on that game. And you know what? My friend Adam is maybe gonna save the day. And actually, uh, this uh, this video here is gonna is inspired by a viewer mail. That's right, guys. We're gonna read this viewer mail, and we're gonna do what it says. Do you guys like this when you guys kind of dictate the episodes. I think it's kind of fun. Give me more episode ideas. If I can do it, if it's not too much hassle, we'll do it. Anyway, this one is from Leslie, uh, Dean Frawley. It says, hi, John, love the show. The way you are mixing up the show lately with road trips, high scores, repairs, restores, and viewer mail is a real winner, in my opinion. Thanks, Dean. My question is this. Your friend Adam is doing the pole position clone FPGA. I know he's been on Arcade Outsiders, my podcast, a few months back and, f and, and featured on a pickup vid on John's Arcade in which there was also a small status update. But that's a few months ago. Would it be possible for Adam to come on John's Arcade and update everyone on the status of the project? Keep up the good work, Dean. P.S. Isn't it about time you came clean about the bob Bobcat thing? It is you, right? <laughs> All right, Dean, here's the deal. I agree, I wanna know what's going on because I want this board because my buddy Adam is making a modern replacement for pole position. That's right, remember I said it's a very hard game to keep working? Well, Adam is gonna solve that with a modern PCB. It's not emulation, it's FPGA. And he's he's been working on this for like 10 years and he is at the finish line. But I haven't talked to him in a while about it. And Dean, I agree, we should go over to Adam's and let's get an update on the pole position clone. And let's go talk to Adam. And by the way, Adam has a YouTube channel called One Circuit. If you go to youtube.com slash one circuit, he's got a website too. He also has a pole position clone status website. It is ppclone.tumblr.com. PP, pole position, ppclone.tumblr.com. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get in the car and let's take a ride over to Adam's and see what's going on with that pole position clone. Let's go see what's going on with Adam's FPGA pole position clone thingy. Housekeeping! <laughs> hey, Johnny. Hey, John. How you doing, man? Good. Happy New Year. Good. You too. Can we go down and see your FPGA? Yeah, come on in. People want to know about it, Adam. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's all, all, right. all the talk? Yeah, let's go down. Yeah, come on in. All right, Adam. What's going on in here? We're, we're supposed <laughs> to be working. <laughs> Well, we're working. We gotta work. So this is Adam's awesome little workshop. I love it in here, Adam. Yeah, it's nice. It, it uh, needs a cleaning, but... You working on some punch-out boards? Yeah, actually, that's. Uh, I don't really have time to do the, the board repairs lately, but this is a one that I promised the guy that I would take care of him for him, and I actually just figured out what the issue was. So oh, is that right? Yeah, there's a problem with the... Um, there's a problem with the uh, pallet, I believe? The pallet. The pallet. 
where basically where the board gets its co colors. So the color like, prom? Yeah, there's a bunch of color proms. Doesn't it happen a lot on these boards when the power supply fails? It takes that out or something? I'm not sure if it's due to the power supply, but I've heard this. But I've run into a lot of pallet problems with people's boards and what. So this is what it looks like right now. So let me yeah, let me fire up the fluke because I actually was using the fluke to debug it here. So hold on one okay. second here. And so the fluke uh, you, is what? Just plugged into the board and yeah, so it talks he, to it? Right. He's basically acting as the Z80. So rather than have the, the microcontrol, I'm oh, no, sorry, the microprocessor, the Z80 in there. Okay. I can have this guy drive the whole thing. Right. And it allows me to stop it, you know, instead of having it continue on to certain um, parts of the game, I can have it freeze in certain screens. I can do RAM checks and ROM checks and all sorts of other good stuff. So what I was doing was I was running it into uh, this situation here. Like, see how the, the pallet's completely messed up? Yeah. So I basically, whoop, hold on, let me return it again. So you're purposely like screwing the board up. Exactly. To, uh, to, or, yeah, to yeah. reproduce what was the board was doing. I'm getting it to stop. Like right now I want it to stop. So it'll just stay there. I mean, the sound's playing, but the sound yeah. will run out. But this way I can sit here and probe, basically you can see what I was doing, I was basically probing all the uh, color prom address lines and data lines, trying to figure out what was causing it to uh, yeah. get screwed up. Um, what I didn't realize is that you know all your address bits are on this side and the data bits are on that side. There's actually an extra address bit tucked in over here. Mm -hmm. So you can think of it as like there's, there's a whole half of the color prom that's used for certain graphics and then a whole separate half that's used for other graphics. What I noticed is that that, that uh, signal was just pegged high all the time. So even though it wants to play around with different banks, it's just being forced to stay in this one bank within the... So how do you fix the board then? Replace that prom? It actually comes from, that signal is driven from the CPU board, this guy right here. Okay. Yeah. But you can see like right here, I think it's the, the signal is just forced high. And so if I were to take this guy and just force it low, and all of a sudden now you got your colors back. Mm. So so that's all it was. But it took me a little while to figure that out. I actually didn't spot that there was an extra address, address line on that prom. Cool. Yeah. You, you've been doing a lot of punch out stuff, haven't you? Yeah, punch out was like my thing for. I mean, nobody was doing them, and I really love Nintendo. The Nintendo the PC. Boards. They're yeah, hardy. They're just they are. They're 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 made so well compared to uh, some of the other boards. You know, you, you try to solder or remove a part, and the traces get lifted up. Yeah. Or there's no solder mask. That's what this green stuff is here. Solder mask. Yeah. So if solder splashes, it doesn't stick to everything. Right. Um, I just love the way they're made. They're so they're so. They're uh, they're still quality. They are. They really are. Yeah. And and it's the common across all Nintendos. Like usually, you know, like some Atari boards get better with age. You know yeah. I mean? You know, not get better with age, but they get better as you start moving into the later 80s and 90s. Yeah. And stuff. These guys. Right you, off the right out of the gate. Right off the bat, the four uh, the uh, what is it? The Donkey Kong 4 stack, you know, great, great boards. These are all great boards. And so I was doing all sorts of boards back in the day, jumping between different board sets, and it was just getting too crazy. I had to remind myself, how does this board work? Because I haven't touched it in six months. And so I found it just stick with Nintendo. They're very similar, and they're they're great to work on. It made my life easier. So, Sweet. Yeah. And I was able to turn them around quicker. So, all right. Yeah. So, Adam, we're, we're here to talk about your, uh, your pole position clone. Okay. <laughs> That you've been working on for about five years. I mean, well, it's longer than that. I've been working on that for like 10 years. I 10 years? Probably. When I first started tinkering <laughs> with it, yeah. I actually, before I had any dev kits, I started on um, just like a little test station with little switches, you know, that would drive logic ones and zeros and try to reverse engineer um, some of the Namco customs. I was so naive. I figured wow. I'd be able to figure it out just by probing it. <laughs> ridiculous, so. All right. So for people who are not familiar with what you're doing, yeah. you're basically making a modern... Replacement. Replacement right. for pole position. Yeah. And this would be a, a board that plugs into the original harness. Yep. Uh, we don't know if it's going to use the original power supply yet. Is that right? Right, right, right. Okay, right. so you'll figure that out later. But yep. the idea is it's it's a modern board mm -hmm. that plugs into the original harness, yep. right? Yep. And you're using FPGA, yep. right? Which is... Uh, field, pro field programmable gate array. Gate array. Right. So it's not emulation. No. You're basically no. programming the logic on that chip? The logic is identical. It's just in a different form factor. So instead of having like resistors and transistors, yeah, it's all having, on this chip instead. Instead of having all of the, actually, here's the pole position board set right yeah. here, right? So this is one that's working and I'm using it as a, you know, debugging tool. Yep. So in, inside of each one of these little, you know, parts is a bunch of logic gates, ands and ors and whatever. Right, right, right. right. So instead of using these, uh, the gates that are inside of these chips to create the circuit, yeah. I'm just going to use an FPGA. An FPGA 
can have tens of thousands, if not millions, of those gates already sitting inside the FPGA, right. not connected to anything. Right. You can decide how you want to stitch them together. And exactly. Them it's like a Lego kit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I look at the schematic. So instead of having a million chips doing the logic, you have one chip doing the same exact exactly. logic. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so it's not emulation. It's not emulation no. at all. It's exact same hardware. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's going to run the original CPUs? Um, yes, but in a, you know, basically somebody who had to reverse engineer how the Z80 works and how the Z8002 works okay. and those kind of things. And so they're, they're extremely accurate. If, are they, you know, cycle, cycle accurate, you know, down to the every cycle? Probably not. But it's close enough to where it, it you runs. You can't tell. Honestly, right. So the, the CPU would be in the FPGA too? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's, everything's in the FPGA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, okay. That, that was the original plan, and we'll talk to why okay. that's not okay. really going to work out. All right. So last time I was here, because yeah. Adam had to reverse engineer all the Namco custom chips. That was the plan. Um, but what I found was that uh, a couple guys in the UK, yeah. uh, Mike Johnson, from FPGAarcade.com mm -hmm. and Wolfgang Shear, they were also doing it for different reasons. Mike was working on Pac-Man, which has, you know, which was originally from Namco, has the same Namco customs. Um, Wolfgang Shear was working on Galaga at the time, which is also another, you know, Namco board set, and has uh, the same customs. And mm -hmm. so we kind of found each other and realized that we were working on different, uh, different groups of the Namco uh, chipsets. Yeah. And so rather than, you know, uh, reinvent the wheel, I gave him all my stuff, he gave me his stuff, and, right. and it just cut our development time. So you guys swapped your exactly. knowledge, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you eventually got all the chips, Yeah. right? Yeah. Because Namco used proprietary chips, right? Yeah. That weren't documented. Right. So there, you didn't know how to put them in the FPGA. Right. Because right. there was no documentation. Yeah. So you had to reverse engineer it to figure out how it how worked. How it worked, right. And which, there's a few of my videos that explain how I did that. I mean, this is like, yeah. that's like I mean, craziness. I built, I built little kits to do that kind yeah. of stuff. These, these are all, you know, stuff that right. I had. I started with some simple kits and then they got a little bit more complex and got even more fancier. But, you know, kits like this allowed me to have what my my interpretation of the Namco Custom would sit here. Yeah. And the actual Custom would, would sit in there. And you'd see if they and did. I would just let them run. And then if there was ever a miscompare, it would flag and say, hey, hey come over here, Adam, check this out. There was a miscompare. And oh, wow. But event, you know, when I first started that, I had to sit there and. Adam, like, this is crazy, dude. Thing. Come on. <laughs> I mean, this is so. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to grasp it as, as yeah. the best I can. But really, this is some high level stuff, man. I mean, you could reverse engineer like a Russian satellite or something. If I don't it, know about that. If it fell in our backyard, <laughs> could, could we. Uh, could we. <laughs> Put in an FPGA? <laughs> All right, so the last time I was here. Yeah. I saw the game running. It was running here, right? And we had it running on this. Right. And this is a, a, a dev kit, an FPGA dev yeah, kit. Yeah, this is a very expensive dev it's kit. It's an expensive one. Yeah, I mean, this this FPGA alone is the Vertex 4, which is actually... That chip. Yeah, it's actually an older FPGA. So that's what an FPG looks like. Yeah, yeah. A, a large one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but this board, I mean, it, or using this hardware is not really feasible. Because this this chip alone in its day was like five grand. Five grand? Yeah. Oh my god. And, and to this day, I think it's still in the thousands of dollars. I, I want to say. Okay. I researched it, but but nobody's gonna pay that. In, no, you yeah. can't use that. So the plan is to use a, a more cost-effective FPGA. Okay. So this was my original dev kit, and I had the, the graphics working and everything. Didn't have the sound working because there's no sound hardware yes. surrounding this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I talked to Mike about it, Mike Johnson, and he um, actually was working on his own dev kit to do the Namco stuff and to do other you know, yeah. arcade games. So that's called the FPGA Arcade dev kit. Or actually, it's called the Replay Board. The Replay Board. And I actually did a review on that. Okay. This is what it is, uh, actually. And, yeah, and by the way, Adam has a, a YouTube channel. It's, it's called One Circuit. Right. Right? Yep. So just, is it youtube.com slash one circuit? Yeah, I think so. No hyphen or anything? No. Okay, no. one circuit. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is your new dev kit. Yeah. So you abandoned that more expensive one, yep. and now you're trying to get working on this. Yeah. So okay. this is And it has a much smaller yeah, FPGA right there. Tiny. Yeah. Is it smaller because it's, it's less powerful or more modern or both or? Both, yeah. Both, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's got you know it's got the FPGA in there, and it's got you know um, a lot of internal RAM. Mm -hmm. But what I really liked about this uh, dev kit is it's got a nice uh, audio DAC, so I can I can generate my own audio from it. This one didn't have that feature. Okay. And so uh, when it came to develop the audio, it was like, should I create a daughter card that kind of hangs off the side of this that has audio, or should I just you know cut the cord now since I know I'm going to have to eventually, and just go on to this new kit? And so I decided to just go with the new kit. Okay. So yeah. you're so you're working on this now. Yeah. And this thing's got. Is 
Yeah, it's a VGA or DVI DVI out. DVI out, yeah. It has a SD, SD card, card reader. Wow. It's got audio. Um, it's got mouse and keyboard because some people are actually um, have reverse engineered the Amiga hardware. Okay. Um, the guys in the UK, you know, are, are big Amiga fans, and they have the Amiga loaded up on here, so they can put all their all their uh, files on the SD card and load it up and, and run the Amiga. So it's really, got keyboard and mouse ports on here. Wow. It's got joystick ports. So let me ask stuff. you a question though. Sure. So you're you're developing pole position now for this. Yes. So when it comes time to produce the game for yeah. us yeah. to plug into our. It's not going to be on this though. No, it won't. But it'll be on some. It'll be on very similar hardware. In fact, the FPGA will probably be the same. Mm -hmm. um, the audio DAC uh, circuitry will be very similar, if not the same. And so the the leap that I have to make from this to the final pole position FPGA board yeah. is will be very small. It will be small. Yeah, so basically, you're going to remove this. everything you don't need from exactly. this exactly. and make your own custom board yeah. using these com same components. Yeah. Because you're you're designing your game to work on with, with that FPGA and, and it knows it's gonna have that much RAM right. and that and audio with an deck. SD card and all that kind of stuff. Right, right, right. But it do obviously doesn't need like a DVI output and all that kind of junk. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. I'm getting this now. Yeah. So just prune the stuff I don't need and I'll end up with a smaller, simpler board. Okay. Yeah. And so what have you accomplished now with the new board? So what I discovered very quickly is that um, and actually this is kind of a um, a bird's eye view of the pole position hardware okay okay so it, it's running off of three uh, cpus one's a z80 and then we get these z8002s there's two of those okay and each one of those guys has its own dedicated rom and ram okay and then um this there's some sound circuitry that the z80 talks to you because he, his basic job is to just run all the sound and then that's this is all on the cpu board and on the video board you've got all these layers of graphics you've got uh, the road, which is kind of painted on first, mm -hmm. and then the cars are painted on after that with some signs, and then the characters, you know, for your score are painted on after that. So you've got all these ROMs, and you've got this massive video RAM for all the things that are going on. What so I, they divided all of the graphics into separate. Right. So like the the roads are on one EEPROM or several EEPROMs. Right. Yeah. And then the same with the signs, yeah. and they divided them up like that. that yeah. That's interesting yeah. to me. Because there's so much. If you look, I mean, how many signs? Different kinds of signs you see. You know. You yeah. Know, yeah. In cars. And it's like funny that. though that, that it's so it's so organized. Like, oh, we're oh, yeah, only yeah. put the cars on this EEPROM. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. It's so they can have control over it because they can they can mm -hmm. then paint the signs on or in, in the car. Oh, so like on layers. Top of the road. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what I discovered was that um, internally, there's just not enough space for all that, for all this kind of stuff. On that PGA? Yeah, yeah. There is on this. How can that be, Adam? Um, because this is so old. It's old, but there's a lot of data that's stored in all these for I, all the See, that, that like baffles that. my mind. Because couldn't we... I could put like every Atari 2600... Car. Game known to man right. on like a on a one gig SD on a yeah, probably, but, on a 128 meg SD card. Yeah, but there's how is it that this so, will not fit on this modern there's hardware? There's not enough. I, you know, <laughs> that's a good that's a good question though. But I should I should look up and see how many uh, how much internal ROM or RAM is actually inside of that FPGA. Um, but I mean, I you can see like this is the um, actually. I so you don't really use this to store RAM and ROM. You want to do that externally. Well, this that, is just this that, is just the logic. That's the plan. I think that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do some people try to oh, store yeah. RAM and ROM but, in on that PGA? So, so here's the game. This is Galaga. This is what Wolfgang was working on. Okay. And so um, this is just main, the main. I mean, how much data account. is this game like? Well, that's the thing. So, 5K or something. So you scroll down, <laughs> you look and say, these are all the ROMs yep. that that Galaga uses. Yeah. So a total of 36K. Yeah. Right. And if you go to pole position. And you scroll down, and you'll see just how many ROMs are needed. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. 192K. So. But what? So, but that's a hundred. That's a hundred. <laughs> that's 192K of ROM slash RAM. That doesn't account for. So that would take up a sizable chunk of that FPGA. It doesn't account for all the rest of the gates that need to fit in there too. I mean, have you ever, have you ever looked at the pole position schematic? It's a book as opposed okay, to some I, of the other ones. All right, so it just goes. It's on not about and like on like okay. On when I on. say like on on, uh, you could put every Atari twenty six hundred cartridge right on like a couple megabytes or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just the ROM data. Yeah. That's not the logic of how the device works. Right, right. Okay, I'm yeah. starting to get it. Okay, yeah, yeah. so this has to hold, you're, you're, you, you you would hope to get the ROM and the RAM data, but then all of the logic all of the, the customs, board. Right, all the customs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, didn't draw I, I any see. Customs here. All, the, all the CPUs, which are very complex. Right, I mean, right. All that stuff's got to fit into that one chip. Okay. And it's just not happening. It's, it's not happening. Not enough, no. So what are you going to do? So the plan is to redesign this, basically, and just have. Um, Take advantage of external RAM. Okay. 
So you've got this RAM and you've got this SD card, right? Yeah. Now Namco is still around. Yeah. And I don't know how they would feel if I release this with all of their ROMs. Yeah. They probably wouldn't be too keen on it. Right? No. So the plan is to just, ha just like Mike's kit here where it's got the SD card, mm -hmm. um, my kit would have an SD card. People can just take all the pole position ROMs as they exist in MAME, throw them on here, and my design will, will identify them, pick them up, and will load them all into RAM. I see. Then when the design is running, rather than have to go out in here and grab it inside of the FPGA, it'll know, oh, I just I can just go out to RAM and get all that stuff. Okay. So all anything that mark that's marked ROM or RAM, which is this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, all of this. It's gonna live it's on gonna that. Live in here. I see. And then all of the just the logic, all the customs, all the logic that drives the graphics, the sound. And all the CPUs can sit inside the FPGA. Cool. Yeah. And then on the SD card, you said we'd have to go get our own ROM. So right. we could put the Namco yep. version of Pole Position, yep. the Atari version. And Pole Position 2. And then Pole Position 2, yep. Atari, and Namco. Yep. So that's four different versions. Yep. Yep. Is there any more? Is that it? I don't think so. There's a couple of bootlegs, but the, the game runs exactly the same. It's just that they found a way to, to fiddle with the hardware so they didn't need some of the Nimco customs. But oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, there's bootleg the pole thing. position boards? Yeah, because there's like pole position 2 has a custom ROM that's not really a ROM. It's actually it does some fancy security stuff. And people found, uh, or people basically hacked the ROMs. They hacked the pole position ROM so it didn't need the custom anymore and stuff like that. Oh, cool. But, but I, I already figured out what that little custom thing did and it's in the design and so we can use the authentic you know, right, right. And, that's going to be awesome, yeah. dude. I I, I'm really excited to play Pole Position 2. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. Because I've played so much Pole Position 1 right. that I don't know anything about Pole Position 2, really. Yeah. I played it a few times and I just know it seems really hard. Yeah. Do you yeah. like it? <laughs> I, I haven't, I don't know if I've ever played, I mean, like, I, I think one of the first times, <laughs> not the first time, but. Uh, when I really started getting into pole position was at your house when you finally got the cabinet. Yeah. Because before that it was intimidating to me. I just I don't know I didn't know what I was doing and you know I was young at the time and I right. just discounted the game like whatever. <laughs> but uh, but but as, I, but as I played it more at your house I'm getting into it a lot. But you had a pole position before I did because I remember coming no. here. Yes. Oh yeah, I have a cockpit. You had that yeah. cockpit but in I your garage. The, cockpit, the only reason I bought that <laughs> cockpit was because the guy yeah. who was selling it said he had a working board set. That's funny. And I was working on this, so I bought yeah. the cockpit, pulled the board set out of it, threw the cockpit right. in the garage. And, and by the way, guys, I met Adam. Through Craigslist. Yeah. I came here seven years ago, whatever yeah. it was, six, seven, whatever, and I bought, yeah, yeah, I yeah. bought the baby Pac-Man. Right, for 50 bucks. My baby Pac-Man that I miss, <laughs> I bought from Adam on yeah. Craigslist. Right, yeah. for 50 bucks. <laughs> and we've been friends ever yeah. since. <laughs> okay, so can you show us anything? Is yeah. this thing doing anything yet? Right. Well, like I said, so this wouldn't fit. In, in, it wouldn't fit. Right, so what, basically what I did is I, I took just this, the sound portion. Just the sound portion and put it in there. Because okay. I, the video and everything is working, right? We've seen it. Yeah, everything you got works. the video working. Right. So now, one and two. So, so you're focusing on the sound Just now, the sound. and then you're going to merge the two together exactly. once you figure out this RAM scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yep. So, so we're going to see today is a, a demo of the sound working. Right, so let me see. And so we're running off this board yep. to the monitor. Right through this DVI connection. So we'll have no graphics. Basically, all we'll have, um, if you put pole position in the test mode, yeah. you can play with the shifter and get yeah. through all the sound. So that's what I did. I basically just kind of hacked the ROMs and say, forget about booting up anything. Just go to the test screen, stay there, and we'll go through the sound. I see. Yeah. And and this the sound is coming out through here? Yeah, and okay. it's going into my... Now, is the sound samples? No, 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 no. It's no. real yeah. sound. So Wolfgang worked on the... 50, it's the real sound? The 50, yeah, yeah. He worked on the 52 series. Actually, they're right here. He worked on... So the FPGA is generating these sounds. Yeah. It's not playing samples. No, no. Oh, dude, including, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, including the speech. Yeah, so these two guys right here. So this is this this is a 52 Namco uh, custom. Okay. 52 series handles the speech processor. Yep. And then we've got some other custom stuff that's going on with the 54. And then the discrete sound is actually generated by the the Z80. Okay. But everything you what hear, does that mean? Discrete sound. Um, it basically will set up a register and say, this is what frequency I want you to play at. This is the note I want you to play. This is how long. Whether I want distortion or not. Whether I want to do any fancy stuff like that. And so the music that you hear and everything, the Z80 actually uh, generates all that sound. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. But the speech... I didn't know that, because I thought originally, a long time ago, you were talking about using samples, weren't you? I was you? thinking about that, but then when, when Wolf and I, Wolfgang and I got together, and he's like, oh, don't worry about the, the Namco sound chips. Those are done. I already have them. Here they are. I was like, Dude, that's I awesome. That? Yeah. I, I actually didn't know that. So that, the plan was That makes do... me feel even better yeah, about yeah, this, yeah. because... Because I was kind of bummed out, because when, when we say samples, you're essentially right. just going to play like WAV files MP3s. or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. 
So no, this is all. This authentic. is the real sound. Yeah, oh, real, dude, real, real dude, work. you have to freaking finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, this is gonna be so badass, man. It really is. So this is it right here. Okay, so this is the uh, so the this test is screen. The test screen, right? Okay, and so this thing's running, yeah. and that's what we're seeing through yeah. that video cable. Yeah. It goes through here, and I have this hooked up just as my shifter. Okay. And so if I, if you can hear that. Listen to that, guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Sounds legit. Dude, that's exciting. I know it's like just playing sounds from 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. What was exciting was like, when I, I, I found out I was undersampling it, and so when it, I could hear it, it was almost like hearing static, and you can hear the sound behind the static, you're like, oh, I'm so close, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. you start debugging it a little bit more, and eventually you're... Oh, dude. And then there's like a couple more, like that's what, I guess, enter your high score. Well, you probably know Yeah, 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 that's yeah, the yeah. high score. So speed. you can tell me what How about prepare to qualify? Yeah, the speech, right? That's what you want Yeah. That's the attraction. That's towards the end. And there's the engine sound, I think. Prepare to qualify. Oh, dude. Click drive and you qualify to race. Now, what did you think that was? Qualified? I, I thought, I, we, Matt and I always talk. Qualified to good, rogue? Good, 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 good driving, you qualified to rogue. Right, what does that mean? <laughs> and the thing is, I've had it in my head that that's what she says, yeah, and I don't yeah, hear anything right. but that. Good yeah. driving, you've qualified to rogue. It's weird. It's, it sounds, <laughs> some board sets sound like like there's an O sound, and other ones, there's, you can... That sounds like mine. Yeah. I, I thought it said qualified to rogue, but it actually qualified to race, right? Is that what it says? It doesn't say that. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like Play that. Play that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go, I, have to, I have to go around the horn, though. Oh, you do? Yeah, that's it. Because someone on Claw, we were posting about it, yeah. I said... Qualified the road. I, and, I, and I always thought it said qualified the road, but even that doesn't make sense. It's qualified to race, right? Here we go. Uh-oh. That's not good. What happened? I don't know, it's not playing. Hold on, maybe we try it again. Uh-oh. Good, good driving, you've qualified to rogue. <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but that's all I hear. Prepare to qualify. Hey, here you go. Ready? Yep. Click drive and we qualified to race. Man, it's it, hard. Now, it well, does now say that rogue. Know, now that I know it's a race, I can kind of hear it. I can't hear race. Is yeah. it just some of those syllables I just can't yeah, do? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that is awesome. So, all right. Everyone wants to know, Adam. God, I don't, yeah. You gotta, you gotta just pick a date. It's hard. You know what? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if people know what I do for a living. Yeah. Um, I do GPU design for cell phones. Uh-huh. And so, as soon as one is done, the next one is right there waiting. You know yeah, yeah. what it's like. Right, right. And so, there are these little little dips where I have time, uh, and work's not so crazy, and after work, uh, you know, when the when the downtime, I have time to play around with this, but there's other times where I'm just working, like, nonstop. So, it really depends on family and work schedule, whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, we're, we're obviously so close, right? Yeah, we, we are. see it. And so, what I've been working on this past week was proving to myself that, yes, I can take all this stuff and put it into RAM, and um, and the rest will fit. And I basically, you know, did all that stuff, ran it through, and the tool gave me the thumbs up, said, yeah, if you do that, we'll take care of the rest, everything will fit. And so that's where I'm at now. So the plan is to just tweak the design a little bit, take all these ROMs and RAMs and stuff, stick it in here. Yep. And then- You're at the finish line. I'm very close. Yeah. Prepare to but qualify. I mean, once the hardware works, then yeah. it's still a matter of laying- Fabricating the, the and yeah. That stuff. So, um, but I don't think it'll be that hard. I don't think it'll be that big of a design. It certainly will not be anything as monstrous as this. Right, right. It won't even be something as complex as this. Right. It'll be so much simpler. And this is something you'll have to go to China to fabricate? Um, I probably will just because it's cheaper. But You're going to make the blank PCBs and populate them yourself? Is how the first couple prototypes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which I will have. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you play this thing far more than I ever do, so. But, I mean, it looks good to me, but... Yeah. Who's, who's, you know, oh, yeah, me and Matt McCarthy yeah, exactly. will put it through its paces because so, yeah, yeah, yeah. we play this a lot. Right, right. So that's, that's the plan. You'll be sure to get one. Yeah, I can't wait, dude. I'm, I'm so excited, Adam. I mean, this is really an important mod, I mean, yeah. or whatever you want to call it, yeah. PCB, yeah. because... There are so many dead pole positions. Like yeah. it is like one of the most problematic games. Period. Yeah. And people are scared of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, knock on wood. Mine's been reliable since mm -hmm. I did the power mods. But really, most people have dead pole positions. Yeah. 
and they know where one is, yeah, or, if, or many, if, yeah. yeah, or if they don't have one, they yeah. oh yeah, some guy down the road's got three of them. I don't yeah. want that piece That's of junk. That's how I got into the hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, met a, I met a collector who mm -hmm. had a warehouse in Vermont, and I walked in and I said, I want to get into repairing a, a game. What what would you advise me? And he tried to you know pull one over on me. He's like, well, pole position. He only and I just saw <laughs> a row of them, and I was like, well, <laughs> that's the one to jump into. Why do you have so yeah. many of them? You know. Well, it's a crazy. It's got two power supplies. Yeah. Right, the edge connectors yeah. burn yeah. up. The the RAM is not. It's got good. a battery that leads ass. Mm -hmm. all right, right. Right. It's and just, so, uh, yeah. and it's got those custom chips. When those yeah. dies, how do you replace those? Yeah. There's just a lot of things yeah. not going for it yeah. in, 19, in 2015, yeah. you know? Yeah. So awesome and yeah. exciting. So, well, Adam, thanks for sharing, sure, man. man. Yeah, anytime. Always good can, to see can we you. go see your skateboard ramp? It's under a tarp. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ride it before the snow hits? You want to? Can we? <laughs> I don't know. It's, all, it's like, what are you going to put the bed, man? I have it all laced up. All right, right. right. We'll have to, though. I see you get your uh, your Bones Brigade uh, yeah. ornaments, dude. Those are awesome. Yeah. Powell put those out. I don't think put them Caballero, on Caballero, Lance Mountain. And then they have the Ripper with the little Santa hat. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Tony Hawk. Yeah. I That's tell you, awesome. Man, just hanging out with you has really encouraged me to like get back into it. Because, the skateboarding, yeah, because it's like no fun doing anything by yourself. Yeah, no, skateboarding is awesome, dude. When I dude. found out that you were into it or whatever. And yeah. yeah, and I, I was watching some video like I, I find myself watching like, YouTube videos of skateboarding yeah. too because yeah. I. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I saw some video yesterday about a long, uh, a powered longboard. Did oh, you see that really? thing? I think I have the yeah, booster yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think I would actually like that. Cause... And then I went to uh, work. Actually, where I work is is uh, headquartered in San Diego. And then on a lunch break, I took a trip to, to the to local McGill's. skate shop. Mike I, McGill. Yeah, it happened to be McGill Skate Shop. Mike McGill was there behind the counter. What a nice guy, man. That's awesome. And, uh, so I hung out with him for like an hour, and he signed a bunch of swag for me. So wow. So yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. All right, Adam. Well, hey, thanks for your time. Yeah, you bet, man. All right, man. Cool. We'll Good see you. Ya. Happy New All Year. All right, guys. Bye. Let's go back to the basement. All right, guys. There you have it. That was Adam and his pole position clone PCB. What did you guys think of that? My God, that was some high level stuff, right? And to think he's been working on that thing for 10 freaking years. Oh my God, we are at the finish line though. I think he's gonna have it done this year. I'm crossing my fingers because you know what? I really would like to have pole position one and two in this cabinet because that would be badass. And also to have more modern, reliable hardware in here. I mean, it's just kind of a peace of mind kind of thing. So Adam, keep going, buddy. I cannot wait to see that thing uh, done. And by the way, I'm gonna be doing the interface on it. I will be doing the design work on that board. And then also I have to mention in the beginning of the, of the video here, I said his URL wrong. It's not PP clone. Well, it's ppclone.blogspot.com, ppclone.blogspot.com. It's not ppclone.tumblr, don't go there. It's ppclone.blogspot.com. If you wanna keep up with Adam and his progress on that board, go there, ppclone.blogspot.com. And of course, Adam has a YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you check it out. It's a a very technical channel, um, and uh, but Adam does a really good job on it. Uh, his channel is called One Circuit. One Circuit on YouTube. Do a search for it and watch his videos. You will learn something. I assure you, you will. Anyway, I want to get right into viewer mail here. Uh, I printed off three of them. Uh, if you guys like this segment, if you want to participate in viewer mail, you need to send them to blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blackdog7 at gmail.com, blkdog7 at gmail.com. You got to put viewer mail in the subject line because if you don't, I'm not going to find them. So please put that in there. I'm actually drinking, uh, uh, this is cranberry, diet cranberry uh, uh, Sierra Mist or something, uh, mixed with a little uh, champagne left over from, from New Year's. It's pretty good, actually. It's actually a good time, I gotta tell you. It's red Moscato uh, champagne, and uh, I don't think it's technically champagne, though. It's from California. It's California champagne. Can they even say say that? I thought if you call something champagne, it needed to come from champagne. Whatever. All right, viewer mail. Uh, first one here from Don Jen, uh, from Donnie in California. Hi, John. I watched your CRT rejuvenator video. Having had it now for a while, do you use it frequently enough to recommend picking one up? 
Do you routinely use it or just rarely? Well, Donnie, uh, truth be told, I rarely use it. I use it a, a couple times a year. Now, however, though, that being said, if I didn't have that thing, I would be in a pickle those, those couple times a year. So I guess if you're gonna be in this hobby long term, if you plan on getting more than a handful of games, I would recommend getting one. I, I think it's a tool that you need to have at your disposal. It's like a soldering iron, it's like a multimeter. You're not gonna use it as much of those, but you will use it. It will come in handy. Um, and it has saved monitors down here that I would have thrown out otherwise. So it can potentially pay for itself right away. I use the Sencor CR7000, which I think uh, most people consider that to be the best one. I picked it up on eBay. I bought it from a hospital, actually. I guess they used it for the EKG machi machines and stuff, and uh, I don't remember what I paid for mine. A couple hundred bucks, actually, which is really cheap. Uh, so, And there's also some good B&K ones. I, I, I'm not really familiar with the other brands, to be honest, because I used that Sencor, and that was the one I, I went after. And... Uh, I guess if you're going to be in the hobby long haul, and if you have more than a handful of cabinets, I do recommend it. If you just got one or two, it's probably not worth it, because um, you're not going to use it constantly. You will use it, the more games you have, the more often you're going to use it, because the odds increase, you know what I mean? So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Donnie. It is a good tool, though. All right, uh, next viewer mail uh, from Palmer. Hey, John, I am Palmer. I am 15, and I love your show. I have an NBA maximum hang time that I've done some work to. I was wondering if you would get any 90s games like NBA Jam or Mortal Kombat. Also, do you know of any good games that are cheap? I started watching when I got my hang time and I've been wanting more games, but they're all expensive or MAME. Thanks so much. You've helped me with lots of problems and introduced me to a whole new hobby that is amazing. Thanks again. Keep up the outstanding work. Well... Palmer. Uh, well, I, I have some 90s games down here. I, I have Street Fighter right there. I got a Neo Geo 4 slot. Uh, my pinball machines are certainly from the 90s. Uh, the dartboards from the 90s. Golden Tee. Well, that's from the 2000s. Uh, so I have some of that stuff. But do I have NBA Jam? No. I, do I want it? Maybe. I don't have Mortal Kombat. I would consider getting rid of Street Fighter and putting a Mortal Kombat down here just to mix it up. I've thought about this a couple times now. Because, uh, honestly, when I was younger, Mortal Kombat was the game that I played and thought was kind of cool because I played it on the Super Nintendo. I never really played Street Fighter when I was younger. So I have thought about getting a Mortal Kombat. I think it would look pretty badass over there. The cabinet, though, isn't as useful as that one, though, because that has a pull-out drawer that you can change the PCBs because I have, uh, right now I have two PCBs in there. I have a Atari's Tetris and Street Fighter and I can access both of those boards and swap them out anytime from the front of the cabinet. Mortal Kombat, you can't do that. So I've talked myself out of Mortal Kombat a couple times because of that. Because um, I like the idea of swapping boards in those big JAMA cabinets. Um, I actually almost bought an NFL Blitz. I actually went to the guy's house. It was on Craigslist. I went there with my buddies. We looked at it, and I got cold feet, and I said, yeah, this isn't good enough. This wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was too much of a project for a game like that, and I, I didn't get it. I, I was this close to getting a, a NFL Blitz down here, and, uh, I don't know. I, I would enjoy an NBA Jam. I know I would. I, I know that. I love that game. I played the hell out of that game on the NES. And, and I would love to have an NBA Jam, but I got nowhere to put it. It's too big. So, no, I don't think I'd get any of those types of games it, unless I did something drastic down here. I mean, Simpsons and Turtles are okay. I've got the Turtles PCBs. I swapped those in and out of my Street Fighter so I could play those. Um, but I just don't want to give up the space for those games. I'm sorry. I, I know that you like those games, and they're great games, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I, I respect those games, but uh, I'm focusing, I think, more on the 80s and then some 90s. So I'm not going to go crazy with the 90s, uh, but who knows what will happen. You never know. And as far as which games are cheap, man, that's that's a very relative question. I mean, it's, you, you know, there's not one. There's, I, I couldn't just say go get this game because it's cheap. Because the prices on a lot of these games are all over the map. I mean, they're all over the place. And 
A lot of it is luck, you know, Palmer. You gotta, you gotta keep looking, man. You gotta look on Craigslist like every five minutes, every 10 minutes, get yourself a tool. Uh, um, on Chrome, I use a, a Craigslist pop-up notification that pops up when my search criteria is matched. Um, I've come up with a pretty good search term. If you go to johnsarcade.com in the forum, I've posted my search term. Um, and so I'm not as aggressive as I was a few years ago, but in the beginning when I first started collecting, man, man I was, I had alerts on my phone, I had alerts on my computer. I was just like, I would, I, I would, I tried so hard not to miss any deals. So you, you kind of got to really look, you know, because there isn't one game I could tell you to go get because it's cheap because they're, I mean, besides like some crappy JAMA game in a conversion cabin, I mean, there's not going to be that game. I mean, I mean, the you know, you'll see a guy with a, with an Asteroids on Craigslist for $1,500 and then two days later, someone's selling, selling one for $50. I mean, that's the reality of this, you know. So don't get discouraged when you see the $1,000 games on Craigslist because keep looking and keep looking. There's going to be that game, that $50 game, that $100 game, that $200 game. It, it will show up. You just got to keep looking, Palmer. And uh, so I hope I answered your question. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I think it's awesome that I have young viewers, you know, makes me not want to swear as much <laughs> or drink as much. <laughs> Don't do what John does. Uh, all right. Next one from Kobe. Hey, John, quick question for you. I've noticed on some of your John's Arcade on the road videos that you and sometimes your friends are eating hard boiled eggs at the start of the trip. What is the significance of the eggs? And how did that tradition start? Kobe. Well, Kobe, uh, it's really stupid, honestly. I mean, I mean, basically, uh, I do like a low carb diet, and I eat a lot of eggs in the morning. And uh, so I, I, uh, I have some. I, I often time if I'm in a rush, I'm in a hurry, I'll stop at a gas station, and I'll buy hard boiled eggs. And I've told Joe this on on Arcade Outsiders, and it's become a bit of a joke because he, he likes to make fun of me because of my gas station cuisine. <laughs> and I always said to him, I, I always say to him, I'm like, dude, I go, the ingredients in this are eggs. There is nothing more in this. It is an egg. It's a freaking egg. It's a pre-cooked, hard-boiled egg. Who cares where it comes from? And then I got some shit from people saying, oh, John, you're going to die from that stuff. It's going to kill you. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's eggs. That's it. The ingredient is egg. It, it is It is just a cooked egg. I mean, you could not get any more simple or pure. Uh, I mean, that is the most simple and pure breakfast possible. And so so because Joe made fun of me, I decided to put it in the videos. And, and other people had made fun of me because I it, it came up on the podcast a couple times. And then when Greg came out here uh, our, from Arcade Impossible, I told him, yeah, we're going to stop at the gas station and get some eggs. And, and Greg actually loved the idea. I mean, Greg was like, yeah, hell yeah, we're getting eggs. I love hard-boiled eggs. And then Greg says, oh, you know, I like to have soy sauce on them. And then so we did the soy sauce with hard-boiled eggs at the gas station. And so, yes, that's why there's hard-boiled eggs in the videos. And uh, so... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and so the last video, when I went up to Pin Wizard, I did stop at the gas station on the way, and I did get some hard-boiled eggs because that was my breakfast. And it's a very healthy, high-protein breakfast. You can't beat it. I have my cholesterol is low. I can have an egg. <laughs> Anyway, all right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if this is my Sunday video. I, I haven't decided yet what I'm do doing tomorrow. This is I filmed this on Saturday. Uh, we might do some stuff tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but we're going to get back to our, our regular schedule now because the new year is here. I'm going back to work. I can't uh, be doing videos every day. But it was fun. Was it a fun run? Did you guys enjoy all the videos? Were you able to keep up with them? So I might give you guys a break uh, for a few days. But... Uh, Anyway, guys, uh, Happy New Year again, and uh, hope you've been enjoying the videos. If you've never subscribed to my channel, now is a great time. Click subscribe. I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between. We do everything, man. We do road trips. We do repairs. We do restores. We visit friends. We visit friends' arcades. We do arcade tours. 
Anything arcade related, I'm doing it, man. And we're gonna do it here on John's Arcade. So if you've never subscribed, now is a great time. And and here's to 15,000. We, we're, we're past the 14,500 threshold. So we're on our way to 15,000 subscribers. I would love to hit 20,000 subscribers by March or something. Can we do that? Is that possible by April? Help me out, guys. Tell your friends. Favorite and like and comment and all that stuff. It means a lot. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, check out my two podcasts. One is called Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com. The other is Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. I do both, those do both of those podcasts live on Tuesdays uh, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on AllGames.com. If you can't make the live podcast, don't worry about it. Go to iTunes or Stitcher and search for Video Game Outsiders and Arcade Outsiders. And as always, the music in my videos is by me and my band, which is me and Matt McCarthy, my buddy. The band is called The Kill Screens. The album is called Science Fiction Movie. The album, the CD, the physical CD is available on Amazon and CD Baby. You can get the MP3 album on iTunes and Amazon and Xbox Music. It's actually everywhere. And then also, if you're a Spotify member, you can stream it for free. And that's the Kill Screens science fiction movie. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Later and bye. Thanks, Adam. Check out his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash one circuit. And, of course, his uh, blog, ppclone.com blogspot.com ppclone.blogspot.com all right guys that's it for me i'll see you later later and bye <laughs>